Speaksies. We've discussed how my life changed after I heard Young Gravy, but this is this is a real change. I have a dog. I am now a dog owner. Welcome to Origin of Species. My name is Scott. I'm here with my friend Steve, and I have a couple of guests with me, Micah Lamont. Hello. And Eric Neff. Hi. And you may remember them from last year. They uh, did a couple of... Eric was the one that said that we should just not do the idiom I brought, um, Beyond the Pale. <laughs> was like, could we, could we do another one? <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> he should've. brought the short circuit knowledge. Yeah. And then Micah is our... Uh, our bartender friend who works at the alley light and he's going to bring some, or he has brought some restaurant words and idioms, yeah. which we'll find out about here in a minute. Yeah. But first I need to, I need to go back to Steve because did you say you got a dog? I am now a, a dog. Actually, I'm still a uh, dog foster because our, oh. our dog is going undergoing some treatments and we will officially be an owner here in a few months, but. Because I will, I, I acted like I didn't know, but I did get the text from you a couple of weeks ago, and it said something like, "We just fell in love with a dog," and I was like, "Yeah, I wanted to call, I wanted to be Steve, somebody got your phone because yeah, it Steve sounds like, like the like beginning him. of the worst Hallmark movie ever." Yeah, but so what happened, man? So my my daughter and I uh, like to torture ourselves by going to a pet store that has uh, dogs from the local humane society. And actually, we'll give a shout out to the Henrico Humane Society. It does a really good job. Um, saw a dog. We had a crush. Made sure mom stopped by and, and saw the dog, too, and approved. And here we are. Well, congrats, man. Thank you. How's it going so far? It's, it's going okay. There's a reason that when I had to apply for the dog that I had to go online and put in my name and the word animals. And it's very nice to see animals that suck is the first <laughs> thing that comes up <laughs> when you do that. So right. otherwise, I do have a clean record with, with animals. But um, I was thinking good about dog. how funny that is that you have the, the podcast that's coming out yeah. hopefully Probably next year. Probably 2020 is called what we're looking at. Yeah, because now it. it's, the, the name's changed, of course. Oh, uh, that's right. What's it called now? It's, wait, I think it's animals, a critical examination. Is that right? Right. It's evolved as we, we've developed. It's now animals, a, a critical examination. Did you change that because of the dog no, thing? No, not at all. Okay. Because it, it seemed like... Anyway. No, I changed that because I started following a bunch of zoos on Twitter and found that I was not getting the right. the response I wanted. They weren't following back because you were called they, animals they that suck? Yeah. I don't know why. Zoos. However, we are, we are now the fosters of Mindy, a beagle who is uh, four to six years old. <laughs> <laughs> she, we can laugh because like you a, have to a laugh. a gap of possibly 14 years. It, it exactly. is, I know. And well, one of the reasons is, and this is true, because she's been in prison multiple times. Oh, so she's from She life. has been at, she was at a, um, a rescue that is, I think being phased out. They would send dogs to prison to be trained. Wow. Does she By have prisoners. Any, any ink? I'm probably a throat tattoo. Is she I'm from waiting. I'm going to. Huh? Is she from Pocosin? Tab, <laughs> I think, is where she went. Um, however, we found out also that the reason that the rescue is now a former rescue is that they were sending the dogs back to prison multiple times to be oh. trained. And, um, so. so, wait a minute. Minnie's I'm, been on I, the inside. What's going on? So they would they would get these dogs. They'd send them to prison. Yeah, for prisoners to, to train be them. trained by prisoners. Yeah, to give prisoners something to do. That I've I've heard of that before. Like a good it's idea. it's a, no, it's a system that's I've heard it in other places. It's done. Um, the downside was the rescue kept sending the dogs back. I think and getting a kickback. Okay. Of the dog going multiple times. Right. So, so she, they were pimping out the dogs like they could have. But through. I mean, it's the odds are she spent a lot of time at a Seven Eleven, which means right. She's probably made, I'm probably the perfect foster for her there. So she's doing pretty good. So she essentially is a, you know, is a dog. So she's very needy and is just a a needy middle-aged woman. I now know what it's like for my wife to be married to me. Like I'm getting an idea of having something that's very hairy and just dependent and has no no self-confidence or self-assurance, which is basically my dog. But 
you know, we've all been reading up on like how to train the dog and the dog's crate trained and housebroken, but we're trying to reorient it to not all <clears throat> dogs are crated equally. Wow. That was a good one. That was good. That was Not solid like, wordplay, it, actually. Yeah, I've got to give you that. Yeah. Many times. It didn't um, make me want to laugh, but right. it, was good. <laughs> it was good. The downside has been is everyone in my family has been learning how to train a dog. Mm-hmm. We've realized that we've all been also trying to do it to each other, like trying to like oh. alpha male each other and like, you know, say things in a certain way, including I caught my daughter with some younger children basically speaking to them like they were dogs and having them having them stay before she went somewhere oh to which I, I was like i'm not sure if i saw her doing that i talked to her i was like honey you can't treat people like that and she goes oh really are you sure i was like i was like yes honey. i bet those techniques do work though yeah yeah <clears throat> well good man well happy you, you once again thank w- you turning over a new leaf that's right Positive Steve from 2019. Positive Steve. Is continuing on. And speaking, we want to talk about Eric's contributions to us. Yeah. Hepatitis D. Oh. Positive Eric is bringing that to us here today. That's what I think you brought with your lip ring. <laughs> I think that's what the reaction the was to the microphone. Okay. Was, was the... Eric has a lip ring, so we're going to make fun yeah. of it. If, but if you hear any no, kind of electrical sounds. Not only do sounds. I have one, I had to take it out, and I went back and got it done. I know. I What's up with that? Did they well, re The one I have it? right now is like is a, is a temp because it's gonna, <laughs> they went back to the original site and drilled, and it's going to swell up more than it did the first time. I I think I'm kind of committed to it. It's going to be a lot smaller in about... So. Six weeks. I'm gonna see if my dog can make some like uh, bourbon in the toilet. Some like you know, some toilet hooch. Pri- prison whiskey. Some hooch. hooch. Yeah. Hooch. Some Turner and hooch. Oh. Could be. Uh, so appar- sp- apparently, Starburst make the best prison wine. Really? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Sugar and acidity. There we go. Yeah. All right. Sugar well, speaking water. of hooch, I think that is a good way to, a good to segue. segue. Yeah. Micah, what'd you bring for us this time? But, well, first of all, Micah brought. A delicious beverage, which we are all sipping on right now. What th- What is this? So it's a mule. So uh, so I got some of my ginger beer that I make from scratch and spiked it uh, with a little gin. And then for uh, for Steve, a little whiskey in there. It's wonderful. It's and now, now that I'm done doing my intro, I'm actually going to go grab it so I don't stumble my way. Yeah. Yeah. Go get it. Um, so Actually, let's take a quick pause. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to just get these levels again because I can't remember who's got which mic. We're talking yeah. about dogs. Huh? A quick pause is kind of funny. Oh, a quick pause. Yeah. We're keeping that in. All right. So, Micah. Yo. What are we What are we doing first? Uh, so, last time we talked about, um, was it no such thing as a free lunch? Yep. And um, 80, Cherry cocaine soda. Yeah. We talked about 86. So, yep. uh, so I, was, I was thinking about some restaurant idioms and, uh, you know. I thought this was going to be kind of easy to, to find something to talk about. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking at, uh, you know, on the rocks, neat, straight up on the fly, uh, some kind of other just common ones. Um, and they all had really, really boring etymologies yeah. or origins, I should say. Except for straight up, which came <laughs> from Paul Abdul. That's right. right. Yeah. So my brother was in love with Paul Abdul, which is kind of funny. Really? Yeah. The Jolionis? Yeah. And now he wears bow ties. And, yeah. Yeah. But, He's a bow tie guy. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, so I was kind of uh, revisiting some of the. Um, so I, I I have to read a lot of books to stay on top of uh, uh, my craft. I work at a bar, make fancy cocktails. Uh, so that's it. by the way, that's how you know Mike is a good bartender because he just said I have to read a lot of books to yeah. stay on. Top. I don't think that the uh, B dubs down the street that you guys just tried to get a drink at. They're, I don't think anyone there could read. Yeah, I don't think they're like taking extra credits and reading books to. They're, they're, anyway, Sorry, right? But good for so, Mike is yeah. a good bartender. He reads books. So and, and so, uh, it's kind of the reason why you need to read books is because a, a lot of the, a lot of the craft came out of this window of uh, uh, American bartenders from like 1850 to 1920, and uh, a lot of the books you know are are that those guys wrote are being you know rediscovered and there's a lot of interest in in uh, cocktail history so contemporarily i follow this guy uh dave wondrick he's written a couple books um about kind of this golden era of of american bartenders from 1850 1920 he wrote a book about punch which is uh pretty interesting it's about you know how uh, uh british sailors in the 1600s brought uh this idea of uh this hindi rum 
beverage mm. and brought it to England and made punch houses. Anyways, the guy's he's kind of known as being an author authority on you know all things cocktail. So uh, a couple of things that do not interest me with in in cocktails. So one one of my biggest pet peeves is like you know when I'm serving somebody and you know they're just kind of being loud and kind of propagate, propagating, you know, folk wisdom about bartending that that's just factually inaccurate or, or, you know, just beating their chest about what they know to right. be true, which frequently isn't true. So a lot of these origin things are just really not interesting to me. Like, I, I don't really care, like, where the Manhattan cocktail came from unless, like, you can pin it down and, you know, there's some kind of legitimate historical inquiry into to to why it's right how you're saying it is sure so uh so the word cocktail has been kind of uh you know nobody really knows where it came from and hmm. uh and in in 2015 if anybody was going to know it's Dave Wonder so in 2015 um he had a uh an article saying he thought he knew where it came from and uh he well I won't I won't go there just yet but uh, just to talk about just to zoom out and talk about what is cock what are cocktails and so the word cocktail um cocktails seem to be an american invention mm -hmm. and uh so this the first time cocktail is defined in print in the united states is in 1806 uh so this is the famous quote and i've got this quote in my my cocktail book here so it's uh, and, and what is your cocktail book? My cocktail book. Thanks for asking, You're Steve. You're very welcome. Uh, it's called The Imbible. Um, it's a, a guide for you know beginning home bartenders. People are kind of curious about bartending, but don't really know where to start. Um, so I tried to make it you know accessible and not too highfalutin for and the I know, average person. I know that can be found at a lot of local booksellers, but that yeah. can also be found on Amazon, correct? Indeed. Right. Indeed. And I would say it's just the right amount of falutin. It's not... Okay. It's not low falutin. Yeah. Certainly not high falutin. It's like mid falutin. It's kind of a, it's a mid octane. Have you guys done high falutin? No, we should though. Yeah, it could. that'd be a good one. I my no... my guess is that it's fluting, uh, like mm -hmm. like fluting on your tiptoes. Mm -hmm. My guess is yeah, I don't falutin can't be the it, it's a that sounds like it's a shortening of some other word like fluting. Like you're but. being fancy. Yeah. Well, can yeah. I ask you a couple questions as you yeah. go into this cocktail thing? So. uh you said you're about to say what the first um, use of it was in 1806, the first time it was defined. But is a cocktail anything that involves like, is it any mixed drink a cocktail? So contemporarily, yeah. So basically you have some kind of, you know, spirit or, you know, higher alcohol base and then some kind of kind of mixer. Yeah. So it could be a gin and tonic or, a, you know, okay. Manhattan or, you know. Even a Long Island iced tea is technically a you know, yeah, cocktail. Okay, now let me ask you this: What's a highball? Uh, so that's yes, uh, Eric. Do you have something to add? High no, Scott was making fun of me earlier for drinking my beer out of a highball glass, oh. but I prefer to drink out of a highball glass because I like the the big open. Yeah, and you can smell it and it's taste better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a highball is so after after prohibition happened and all the talented American bartenders left the united states nobody knew how to make drinks once they uh oh, right. re-legalized everything so yeah. so highball is basically just like the easiest kind of thing to make it's usually a, oh. a, a spirit with some kind of mixer okay so like a rum and coke um and i think the original highball is like you know either whiskey and ginger ale or whiskey soda or i did not know that so, so yeah the basic thing you don't have to be a bartender to make at all Right, Which, you don't yeah. need you don't even need the imbibe for that. But if you want to take one step past that and learn how to actually mix a drink, yeah, I mean, technically we're we're having a highball, even though it's kind of fancy. Well, because the ginger beer was made from scratch. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, but but going back, a uh, cocktail previously. Uh, so here's here's this quote, and it's kind of interesting because a lot of these references to cocktails all are kind of tongue in cheek and all involve making fun of people politically mm. man i feel like so many of the phrases words and phrases we do go back to like some sort of political yeah way to you know make fun of somebody yeah like all hat no cattle um no you know a bunch of them yeah so uh here's the quote uh 
from 1806 from uh, the Balance and Columbian Repository. Uh, cocktail is a stimulating liquor composed of spirits of any kind, sugar, water, and bitters. It is vulgar, vulgarly called bittered slang and is supposed to be an excellent electioneering potion inasmuch as it renders the heart stout and bold and at the same time that it fuddles the head. It is said also to be of great use uh, to a democratic candidate because a person having swallowed a glass of it is ready to swallow anything else. Hey, does it have to have all of those things like the sugar and all those things uh, in order to be a cocktail? Yeah. So back in the day, um, so this is what Dave Wondrick would say. Uh, so prior to this cocktail, there was this thing called sling, which is basically just whiskey, uh, and sugar with some water. Um, and, uh, people, and so this is actually a good like question. A Singapore sling? No, that sounds no. nasty. So, so, so this is this is actually <laughs> Brett broke his arm in Singapore. Oh, in Singapore, and, and, and he, mom went to visit. He had him. to wear a sling. <laughs> yeah, my uncle paid fifteen dollars for one when he was over there. A, a sling in Singapore. Yeah. yeah. All right, Brett will be here on the twelfth. We should do one with him too. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, so, so anyways, hepatitis this... S. I'm sorry. Oh, he got hepatitis while he was there too. By the way, see, yeah. and reference yeah, to your hepatitis, hepatitis. probably because he got a sling lip ring, sling, a, 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 a lip sling ring. Oh, oh sorry. Edit that. Please continue. Have a uh, like a hip hop uh, persona called Happy D. <laughs> that's a, that's a good idea. Happy D and Happy D. Happy D and the boys yeah. and Da Boys. Now yeah. that we found love, love, what are we gonna do? I think we have the new marketing campaign for uh, Water Country. For, oh, for 2020. <laughs> Steve, I don't know if you heard that when Steve said I got back from water country, I had the whole family of hepatitis <laughs> fighting it out. <laughs> wow. But but no, I was telling y'all before, Alphabet hepatitis soup. C I think is cured. Because no. it because Pep C is the bad one. No, I it? know it's the bad one, but from what I just heard on a podcast, which could be wrong, is because of um everybody getting uh what's that thing you get that people oh vaccines. Mm-hmm. Oh, Our God. bodies have learned to I guess fight these other things, and therefore now Hep C just automatically takes care of itself, and you're fine. Now, having said that, someone needs don't to take the, my word for yeah, it. And someone needs to tell the people at the local dirt mall. <laughs> so there's there's a mall that's basically the Pembroke Mall of Richmond, oh, Pembroke Mall of oh Richmond, yeah. God. And all the all the posters in there are hepatitis C posters, right? Dude, I moved away a long time ago to get away from the word Pembroke Mall. Like yeah. that. Oh, well, yeah. when you hang out with us, you're going to... that. And yeah. I live very close to 7-Eleven, so you can feel like, like yeah. it's home. Anyway, right, I don't so, know. That yeah. whole Hep C thing may be wrong, but I, it was Brian Callen. That's what in the Eric Weinstein we're okay. talking about. It. But anyway, so back to yes, uh, so, Singapore, so, Slingapore. Yes, speaking of social uh, ills. So, um, so yeah, so, so in, in America and in, in the 1800s, people were, were over imbibing too much or, or they were over imbibing. So they were drinking, uh, mostly whiskey with sugar and water. And part of the reason why, uh, this thing called bitter slang became popular was because everyone was, was so drunk that being hung over was also a, a really big problem for mm. everybody. Yeah. So, um, so this, this cocktail uh, with that's got this missing ingredient of bitters is is really kind of a medicinal component, and so people would have uh, a hair of the dog with just a little bit of this medicine in it to cure their morning hangover. Can Wait you tell minute. me what's in the bitters that helps? Uh, so herbs. Yeah. Okay. I mean herbs, man. They're bitters. from the earth. Yeah. But yeah, hair of the, hair of the dog. That just means having a drink the next day to sort yeah, of but it's the restorative beer. But did they right, put bitters yeah. in there to pretend that they were? You know, I'm not just having another drink. I have yeah, some putting, herbs in here. Well, right. I mean, so so if you look, if so, uh, Dave Wonder talks about how a lot of these medicinal bitters were marketed as like you know stuff to cure upset stomach, stuff to cure a headache, just the bitters themselves. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and so people were like, okay, well. I I feel I've got an upset stomach. I've got a headache. Like let's throw my you know equivalent of Alka Seltzer in my morning beverage, in my hair of the dog. Was everybody doing the hair of the dog? I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it from what he's from what he you know says, you know, alcohol was a really big problem in the yeah. late 1700s and 1800s. Because well, you so, were also what was the average lifespan? Forty eight. Yeah, I mean, really, it probably was around that. So you you weren't worrying that much about liver disease or anything else because right. you were going to die of 
dysentery anyway. Right. Or and and without going uh, too far in the weeds, uh, you know, Americans struggled with with alcoholism and right. you know ha- enacted prohibition. Uh, a bunch of other countries have done this, and a lot of countries in Asia still have prohibitions on alcohol. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in some of the lists of uh, European countries that have enacted prohibition is surprising. Um, like Russia had prohibition for really? a while. Uh, Norway. How'd that go? Uh, <laughs> they invented communism afterwards. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. I, th- I think the, the Bolsheviks were oh, after really? that revolution. Yeah. They wanted to limit people having uh, Well, that's alcohol. just because they... Yeah. Well, I they, think they couldn't freaking afford to make it. Well, if we're tangenting too much, let me know. But one of the things yeah. about I, I've watched the the Ken Burns Prohibition yeah, too, documentary, and you know we talk about prohibition now, and I, I don't think we should have had it. But people talk about it now like it was just like ridiculous. People were ridiculous because someone yeah. was having too many extra Budweisers. That's not the way it was no, happening. Was, people yeah. were, you know. Lives were destroyed. Yeah, yeah, families were destroyed. Lives yeah. were destroyed. People were like literally drunk in the streets yeah. and not not coming home or coming home and like beating their their spouses. Right. Not not trying to be funny. Is Ireland on that list? I bet they're not. Uh, uh, no, but it, it they, was mostly they have Nordic, been, Nordic countries. I remember when I was in Ireland, some Irish lady that was like really old, like just going on and on to me about the drink like she yeah. called it she's like oh the drink has taken more li-. i mean mm-hmm. it's such a big problem there and it has been for for a long time but thank god we got it cured in america right guys cheers right. well <laughs> no yeah. more alcohol no and, and, and so if, if i can just uh forecast something for the future sure uh i think when when driverless cars happen Ooh. Uh, I, I and and now that there's kind of a liberalization of alcohol you know after you know, after the 90s and the 80s. Yeah. Uh, I think if no one has to drive, I think consumption will probably go up on the order of like 15 to 20%. Man, you're right because you don't have that and there's no barrier built-in barrier. To, yeah. Holy yeah. crap, I hadn't thought about that. So, well, do, but so until that happens, I actually just heard, and by the way, I think this technology has been around for a while, but they're starting to actually, actually introduce some stuff into um, bills where – cars in 10 years are going to have to have like the built in um not software but what do you call it the technology mm-hmm. to be able to tell if somebody is drunk based on their eyes right and so that might bring it down but once they get the automatic driver or the driverless cars yeah, yeah i mean yeah you don't you don't want to drive if you don't have to if you've been right had some drinks yeah so. you got i don't you know some time no, so <laughs> i was that joke, why, but... why we're on the topic of this and let scott jump in if you're if i'm going too far off so as a professional um bartender and someone who has published again and what, what's the name of your book the imbible the imbible yeah. available it's a good your, play on words too yeah, the at, imbible yeah. at your local bookstore or if you can't do that at amazon what are some good um, hangover recommendations that you have for anyone here that's listening that would actually drink too much, which is uh, definitely not me? My recommendation is don't drink too much. Okay. And now that you've said that, what are some hangover <laughs> yeah. cures that you recommend? Um, <laughs> so I remember <laughs> the, the being, people. I'll let this, you answer that, but I remember being with Micah a long time ago in Charlottesville and drinking, and you were suggesting I eat some, we, we got some pizza, and you're like, Dude, eat some of that pizza, man. He's like, you're like metabolize that that alcohol, yeah. dude. Well, yeah, that's that's not a bad idea. Yeah, so I always think about that. That's my that's that's my justification of yeah. eating pizza late at night. Yeah, Mike said some, it'll help me. Yeah. Out. Now, now, mixing now, in the water. Does that put you in a weird spot asking you that? Is it like asking the guy like at the gun store, like you know, what do I do to to do this? And like you know, you're not supposed to use a gun. Let me get those hollow points. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I. I mean, I there there are no shortcuts for me. Like I, if I drink too much, I feel like. So, so I'm trying to never pair the it. dog with bitters, bringing it back. Um, yeah. So uh, electrolytes. Yeah. yeah. Have maybe maybe a little hair of the dog, uh, maybe a big greasy breakfast. Um, you know, it's. I yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. There's no real okay. yeah. real way. Right. way. So no, the real cure is not to hydration. Drink, drink so you, much. If you see something In at medicine. the Seven Eleven mm-hmm. that we all frequent. Yeah, that says it's going to take care of your. Yeah, I just you don't even buy a, that. Yeah, I we can get you some more time. Mickey's. We just walk up the street, and <laughs> do right. that for you. Yes. Um. Yeah. So, uh, just to just to get back on track here. So, uh, America has a problem with with over imbibing. They're over imbibing this thing called sling. Uh, they add medicinal bitters to it. It becomes known as cocktails, kind of a thing that everybody knows about by 1806. Um. 
so we've got this word cocktail that's kind of in the ether. Uh, so a couple apocryphal um, origins for for the word cocktail. So I um, thought we'd just kind of breeze through a couple of these just, just so we can debunk them. Uh, one of them is a, a, there's a word cocktailier, which is a uh, French uh, thing, little cup that you serve mm -hmm. hard boiled eggs in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is it's it about like C O C Q. Is there, yeah, there's a Q in there yeah, somewhere, right? Yeah. yeah. And so the, the, the theory was that uh, people were making little, you know, liquor beverages and serving them in these little cups. Not, not really, yeah. you know, corroborated by much uh there's a theory that there was an aztec princess named shochitl who served drinks to americans in like the 1800s which just like seems even more far-fetched mm -hmm. um uh there's a theory that uh, uh a cocktail um uh you were you would do this thing to a horse where you cut the end of the 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 hair on their tail off okay so that uh, their tail would be docked um, so that you could distinguish them uh, from another horse. And usually they would dock the tails of non-thoroughbreds. Mm -hmm. So uh, cocktail, they said, maybe was synonymous with, was something uh, with a mixed breed. Oh, so, geez, so that is a stretch. So, yeah. So yeah. anyways, so so Dave Wondrick in, in an article in 2015, at the very end of this like kind of long interview... Um, he says, just kind of off the cuff, uh, uh, this is a quote from him. Dave Wondrick, ginger was used in the horse trade to make a horse's tail, horse stick its tail up. They'd put it in its ass. <laughs> if you had an old horse you were trying to sell, you would put some ginger up its butt and it would cock its tail to be frisky. That was known as cocktail. No way. It comes from that. It became this morning thing. Something to cock your tail up like an eye opener. I'm almost positive that's where it comes from. <laughs> so this is why this is why Eric is relevant to the discussion, because evidently I love redheads. Well, we'll get to that. Gingers, hold hold that thought. That's so, crazy, so, man. So when Horse, I so when all... I so when I read this, yeah. I was just kind of like, all right, this is another apocryphal story. It comes from a good source, but mm -hmm. like, I I just don't know if I really like buy yeah. it at that point. Right. right. So that was 2015, and I just kind of didn't think about it anymore. And then I looked this back up just as, just recently. And the subsequent year, he blows this story wide open. Oh. And it's really fascinating. Hmm. Um, so um, so it, this, this goes back to England. And so this guy, uh, he's, uh, uh, Wondrick starts researching uh, kind of anywhere he can find the word cocktail uh, in, in English literature. And he finds this, this satirical bar tab for politicians again. And he right. finds at the very bottom of the bar tab, one of the, the least expensive things on the bar tab is called a uh, cocktail, uh, cock hyphen tail. And, uh, and in parentheses, it says vulgarly called ginger. And so he was very confused by that because it sounds like in England, uh, people understood that this thing, uh, ginger, right. you'd put it in a horse's Wh butt to right. make their mm -hmm. tails stick Why else up. would it be vulgarly yeah. used that way? Right. What else are you going to do with ginger? Yeah, so so it's kind of it's kind of a semantic uh, shift here. So Can I – I feel like I missed something. I missed the part where why does – so ginger makes – a horse, ginger. Why, why ginger? So ginger is incredibly horse's butt? stimulating and aromatic. Yeah, yeah, but that has nothing to. do It makes it them stick their, their butt up, so that it makes well, them look more like, like. Have you had? Have you ever had like a butt like having sushi? Have like a yeah. bite of ginger? You know, I don't really like ginger or, that much. It, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It's like but, lemon juice. If you get okay. if you're you got a little cut on your finger and you're mincing ginger, so, it, yeah, it would be like it would be like having um like Vicks vapor rub or something if they had yeah. that. <laughs> and so and so. This, if you Google gingering and you look up, this is right, gingering? Up, right, mm. right off. Of, <laughs> that happens a yeah. lot in, yeah, uh, dude. In, that's listed I've, on the hepatitis C poster yeah, at, say, at that's the dermal. Sing Singapore. So, uh, I'll just do this real quick. Yeah, do uh, it. Uh, gingering. I went to Dublin to, to do some gingering. <laughs> so this is fascinating. Yeah. Like they've got, okay. Uh, historically the process, uh, 
uh, the purpose of, of which was often to make an older horse behave like one that was younger or to temporarily liven up a sick or weakened animal is known as feeging, from which the modern term figging comes from, and involved a piece of ginger, onion, pepper, tobacco, or a live eel. Or Whoa. a live eel. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that, I'd like to take the first. Actually, I don't isn't know. That, isn't that crazy? Yes, it's that's crazy. crazy. This is this is strictly for animal for horses, right? Yes, for okay. perking up horses. It just absolutely blows my mind. Jeez. Anyways, poor horses, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, think about the. Like, let's take a minute for the horses. Yeah. First of all, they we ride them. Then we like make them. The way we like make them mate is really weird. And yeah. then we do this thing. So, yeah. So, I work with two horse people and I was, I was like, hey, you know, I hope this isn't too forward, but I'm doing this podcast and like... Are you aware of... Like, yeah. are you aware of these practices? And uh, she's like, well, uh, I am aware of like certain types of... Uh, she's like, I'm sorry. I'm not yeah. ready for a relationship, Mike. <laughs> right. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm not really ready for a relationship, Lois. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for asking. But thank you for asking. I don't feel bad for horses, by the way. They get oh, wow. they get catered to, dude. They were like, and you know what? If they if they're so f- smart and so big and strong <laughs> and like self sustainable, then f- do it yourself. That's a good make point. a better life for yourself. Do Be yourself wild and horse. free. Why are there no more wild horses? You have Gross to go to like opposable thumbs. You have to go to Corolla Beach to see some f- wild horses. <laughs> Did you say Corolla Beach? What? It is Corolla. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Horses do. I know. I will back. It's not the Toyota Corolla, but yeah. I will back up Eric on this. Name another animal that gets a trailer and it's listed. Horses. Like you see a horse trailer. Like it makes it very clear there's a horse. A horse runs one lap and he gets. He's set for life. Okay, but a a horse twists his ankle. Yeah. And it gets. That's the literally the nature of the beast. But it it continues on as glue. Or, or, you know, the, or the dog food together. I just I bought a, for Mindy. I was Mindy. asking the, uh, my, my friend about if, if they really get turned to glue. She's like, no, they just get put to pasture. We've been lied to? Yeah. No, she went well, really hard. Yeah. We make glue yeah. out of other things now. Yeah. All right, Back so in the day. Okay, why does donkeys. Elmer's glue have a cow on it? That's my question. Did anybody ask about oh, that? Oh, you know what? You don't want to hear the, you don't yeah, hear don't. the backstory right. on that. That is twisted, and I know the whole thing. So... Okay. This is amazing. So, Micah, please, please. Okay. So let me wrap con- up for let us. me connect the dots here. So, so in in England, you would add a cocktail or literally ginger to an alcoholic beverage to perk it up. Okay. So that became synonymous with the idea of a beverage that would cock your tail, that would make you pep up. Okay. Uh, so then, in in the United States, you got everybody that's hungover. You give them a hangover cure, and then it becomes known as a cocktail something that you know makes you feel better in the morning after you know yeah drinking too much the night before wow um, that was awesome yeah um just real quick b- before we leave the topic um uh so this process of, or this whole practice of gingering uh this is a, t- a torture thing that goes back to like greek times where oh. where you know people would torture yeah. torture humans by putting ginger in their butts Mm -hmm. Uh, And how I thought Eric could contribute to the Mm -hmm. conversation is that gingering is uh, something that's done in BDSM communities. I've never heard of it. (laughs) Really? Okay. Why did you think of me in BDSM? I have Uh, no idea why. Yeah. Maybe it's a leather mask you're wearing right (laughs) now. That's not leather. The the lip ring. It's vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, man. That's pleather. It's PETA approved. (laughs) yeah um, so okay so okay it's beautiful I think, I think we resolved it okay so the yeah. next the next one's pretty short but i thought it was kind of interesting so the the next one is gin up so gin up so like somebody says where is this used what, it, it, gin up is where you say like you're coming up with something out of thin air right so you're you, ginning up some charges against oh like trumped up so no, not really. Am I wrong? Is so, that not, yes. Okay. Well, what is okay, so, so p- part of the reason why I wanted to do this one was because uh, your boy Obama. Yes. Uh, your boy Obama. <laughs> he's looking at Steve right now because um, that's Steve's. And if no one believes that's true, please look at speaksies.com slash animals where I share my inspirational quote from Barack Obama. It so, inspired me to, to take a hard look at animals. I, you're yeah. basing your hatred 
on animals. I don't hate animals. No, it's I, not hatred. It's a critical examination. A critical oh, examination. Okay, well, that makes more sense because yeah. I was like, it's weird timing with your podcast and like your dog <laughs> critical uh, approach to like. Please, please continue, Michael. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but, but I, I, I just as an aside, I thought it was kind of interesting. It just I'm not up. not getting to talk to you guys every week and yeah. just hearing your podcast. Uh, I kind of deduced that your politics were more kind of like center right, so I was surprised to hear that you were such a fan of Obama. Oh yeah, but um, anyhow, it's he's, okay. He's a cool hey. cat. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so he kind of single handedly resurrected this this phrase "gin up," which basically means Obama did. Yeah. So it it was it comes from Dude, the late awesome. late eighteen hundreds, but he he kind of it started to increase the usage of of gin up. So gin up basically means to, to kind of stir up and it kind of has some. Okay. A, a little bit of a negative trying to, trying to bring something out of nothing. Yeah, and trying, trying the pot, to, trying to in, increase interest in something through, okay. f- through not necessarily like you know honorable means. Michelle Obama's uh, super okay. hot. All right, all right, all right. P.S. <laughs> That's where I draw the line. We can't talk. <laughs> I don't Maybe know. you should show some I got to edit down, this thing, know. so yeah. I got to figure out what you're going to say first. Yeah. Okay. Biggest, okay. Re- uh, biggest yeah. respect I can give. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so Obama used this phrase a lot. And uh, um, so when I was looking at this, I was almost certain that it would come from the gin craze mm-hmm. of the, the 1700s in England, um, which, you know, we talked about abuse of alcohol in the United States in the 1800s. Yep. This really comes from people going nuts in England in the early 1700s, drinking way too much gin. That would have been interesting to hang out with. Yeah. Like, like Bill and Ted should have gone to that, I, I think. Did, did, did they do that? No. They should have. Um, well, maybe they can do that in the third one. In the third I one, hope yeah. they don't because the, they both look like they need sleep. No, well, first of all, don't don't besmirch uh, John Wick like that. He, he will, looks. He, he looks. By the way, no, Keanu Reeves is like my idol. Yeah, he will shoot you in the face. But you know, what I just thought about Gin Up. So, you guys have heard the song by uh, Snoop Doggy Dog, Gin and Juice. <laughs> <Yeah>. Snoop Doggy <laughs> Dog, <laughs> Gin. And Jordan in that song, Anderson? doesn't he say? Doesn't he say, "G's up, hose down." While yes. you bleep bleep, uh, yeah, G's up, hose down. So gin up kind of sounds like it could have been from okay from that. Yeah. And I'm not saying Obama listens to Snoop Dogg, and because that would be racist to just to say that, but he does like Jay Z. We know that because yeah. he partied with Jay Z. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe you're going to get to all this. Okay. I just uh, thought I'd throw that out there. Gin up, G's up. So gin and juice. No. Okay. To add add my I, I, I think I think there's a chronological error in that logic. No. The, yeah. the, Gin up comes from Snoop like, Dogg was way was, back. I know, but I'm saying so. There's no way that he would have gotten it now. Okay, well, so one of the things I find interesting, we've talked <laughs> in the past about uh, the the confrontation historically between the English and the Dutch. So, yeah, there's yes, been some they are so, not. They're not fans of each other, yeah. but we know that the Dutch created or the originators of gin. Oh. Wait, the it Dutch is. originated gin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did not yeah. know that. Yes. So, so this, is, this is why... did that from his research on the Dutch episode. Yeah, and Could this is sworn. why they got... They were so into gin was because um, uh, at the time... So English people have always wanted to drink French and Spanish things like mm-hmm. port and brandy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were at war with France, I think, in the early 1700s. Mm-hmm. And then they... They made peace with William of Orange. Who's William the, the Orange. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, how about no, you crazy Dutch bastard? Exactly. Is, is that your Dutch? That's my that, awesome, awesome power. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's yeah. two people. So, two yeah, kinds of William, people William the Orange, who's also the, the William and William and Mary. And also, New Orange was before New York. That's right. Yeah. Because of New Amsterdam, New John Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, yeah. the, it's all coming the, together. Yeah. The, and then, and then there's also the Snoop Doggy Dog part, which is also part of this too, right, guys? Yeah. yeah. All right. So go ahead, Micah. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, I, I was, I was, I thought this was going to be for sure where it came from. Oh, uh, but, but there's a twist. But um, and no pun intended. That's a bartender the pun. pun. <laughs> no, that's, yeah. that's what they say when you get a Singapore sling right before the end. <laughs> And then hepatitis B. There's a twist. Hepatitis it's, S. And then you get gingered. Uh, so it means ginger up. No way. Yeah. Ginger up. Oh, it, it so means, it's like cocktail. Yeah. Ginger up. Yeah. Gin up. Up your yeah. horse's ass? Yep. No, it's good. Yep. yep. Gin up is, comes from the same thing. Yeah. Everybody, Micah, that was awesome. You tied that together very nicely. Yeah, that, yeah, was, that was, you did it kind of like a like a, a bit of a sleuth. Yeah. 
It's crazy. Like a courtroom oh. drama sleuth. Yeah. It, it, well, here's, here's what's wild. Um, there are so many of these that we do that come back to horse racing or horses. And the fact that this whole gingering process Plus, was so um, prevalent that it would, you know. But this is also kind of interesting because all of the cocktails that feature ginger have some kind of equestrian thread. Really? A mule. Um, mm-hmm. <gasps> guys, minds are melting Bringing right now. Bringing it yeah. together. Uh, which we're drinking. Yeah. Uh, horse's neck cocktail also I'm ginger. Hammered, by the way. <laughs> thank, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. this is so no, good. thank Mike, you. You no, brought the gin. Mike is, I Mike is, gin in a year. Mike's um, superhero skill is making drinks that are pretty strong. Also, don't, that's bye. okay. All right. Bye, Eric. Eric. That was Eric hitting the mic with the drink. Yeah. <laughs> Better that than like d- dumping it on the mixer. And right? I knew Eric was drunk as soon as he said, I went to Taco Bell. I was like, well. <laughs> he invoked Mickey's Big Mouth. Yeah. So, um, oh, I love those. But, yeah. but anyway, um, Micah's superpower is making a potent potable <laughs> that uh, tastes delicious. Balance. It does not taste like balance, man. alcohol. It's very yeah. good. So... Dude, that was amazing, Micah. Cool. Micah, th- Steve and I talked about this after the last one. The bad part about having you on Should is I it makes forever? us look stupid. No, because yours are so good no, and so well good done. and well researched. Oh. Wow. Mine's usually like, hold on a second, I'm going to read this directly from... Scott uh, ha- yeah, and Scott has to clip together, I think, the next one of the ones that's coming up. When I, I totally made a mistake and realized <laughs> I like, gave the wrong the wrong answer oh, whoops. And, and caught it like... Ten minutes after, we, it, I said. it wasn't. It, it, the bottom line is, it, it it did come from this the person he said, but it was not the same play, and we did the whole play, and and but it was still a good episode. Yeah. I enjoyed it, and we caught ourselves. Yeah. This is all a compliment to you. It's all a compliment oh. to you, Mike. Thanks. Um, that was amazing. I think yeah. we got that. Is there anything else? Uh, uh, one, you want to add? Uh, to last interesting thing, just for your own yeah, personal edification. Please, we got plenty um, of time. The the only the other origin of gin up, uh, people thought it might mean engine up. Okay, I see that. Um, and so to to engine meant to like process something, and and this kind of right. co- connects the dots on why you call a cotton gin a cotton gin. I've always wondered that. Yeah, so it's a so cotton, engine cotton gin. engine or cotton processing thing. All right, so there so. we have it. So gin up, and and you know I just thought. So in, in addition though to the Snoop Dogg thing yeah. for Obama, DMX party up was a big song. What do you have at a lot of parties? Straight up. Gin. Especially, oh, straight up. Especially yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Party Up by DM. No? What, tying that into what? I'm trying to tie it in. So, so it has nothing to do with rappers is what you're saying. Uh, no. Gin Up. Yeah. Gin Up. I party think, Up. Well, gin and Juice. It, it, it precedes raps. It, yeah, it's so way right. before. Okay. You're, getting Why your, did Obama, you're getting your timeline. Why up. did Obama start using it again? No, nope. he in, said nobody used it except for Obama. Because when, not, it wasn't because of not DMX. Nobody. When he was in Hawaii... He go. used to train racehorses. This is Steve with Origin of Speaksies. Thank you very much for listening to our show today. If you're interested in learning more about Michael Lamont and how to make a cocktail like a pro, his book, The Imbible, is available at your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. Also, Michael will be coming up again in our annual Thanksgiving episode regarding the movie Roadhouse. In this episode, we throw out the idioms and discuss why we believe Roadhouse, starring Patrick Swayze and his butt cheeks, should be the official movie of Thanksgiving, and why if you disagree with us, you should get hepatitis. Also, if you enjoyed the show, please leave us a positive review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or the podcast provider of your choice. Thank you again for listening to Origin of Speaksies. This is Robert Banquet, host of True Facts with Robert Banquet. On the next episode of True Facts with Robert Banquet, I will examine the life and career of Amelia Earhart, American icon and aviation pioneer, the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. I will discuss her early life in eastern Kansas and the many obstacles that she had to overcome to pursue her dream of flying. In addition, I will open the Banquet family records to discuss the true facts regarding her disappearance in 1937. Here is a preview of the next episode of True Facts with Robert Banquet.
Amelia Earhart, aviation pioneer. Atchison was your typical eastern Kansas town. The population remained small, and it still held memories of the Civil War from just a few years prior. Citizens remembered Quantrill's Raid, better known in Kansas as the Lawrence Massacre, where Confederate forces in Missouri attacked the neighboring Union town of Lawrence, Kansas, resulting in Lawrence being burned to the ground and many of its inhabitants murdered. This shocking event led to a prejudice against Missouri that was ingrained into all of its inhabitants, including young Amelia. The Earhart sisters spent their days outside going on adventures, watching out for any Missourians coming in the countryside, playing as rough and tumble as they pleased in the outdoors of Kansas. They would be considered tomboys in our modern parlance. True fact, they spent their days as most children did in eastern Kansas, including climbing trees. Playing in the Missouri River. Watching out for people from Missouri. Shooting fish in a barrel. Taking turns on tornado watch duty. Collecting all sorts of animals, including toads and frogs. Shooting, but only wounding, raccoons using their rifles, bearing the dead after a tornado, finding out if a stranger was from Missouri, and then shooting at them with their raccoon rifle, throwing wounded, angry, and probably rabid raccoons at anyone they suspected was from Missouri, and fishing. Thank you for listening to this preview of the next episode of True Facts with Robert Banquet. Amelia Earhart will be released on Wednesday, November 20th. To make sure that you don't miss an episode, please subscribe to True Facts with Robert Banquet at your favorite podcast provider. For episodes and transcripts, Go to speaksies.com slash true facts. That's speaksies.com slash true facts. I wish you a wonderful day, and as always, roll tide. Speaksies.